Hi everybody. Today I have a new planner to share with you and I'm really excited about it. It is the new limited edition Paradise Blue Passion Planner. So no, I'm just going to answer the questions. No, I don't need another planner. I mean, does anybody really need another one? But I really, really love this one and so I could not resist. It is a limited edition color, which is the Paradise Blue like I mentioned. They also had a gold one. And I'm not usually tempted by limited editions like that. The name itself doesn't really tempt me. However, this color with the new cover on it, I really, really was drawn to this one. I actually sat on this purchase. I think they've been out for several months, two at least, if not three. And so I do feel like I made a you know, very conscious decision and it was definitely not a spontaneous one. So I'm really happy with it. I think what really clinched it for me is because it was limited edition, I knew that if I did not buy it, that is something that I would have regretted. Whereas I can let a lot of other things go and it wouldn't have bothered me at all. But this particular one, this is one of my favorite colors, if not my favorite color, as well as red. Like I would say red and this kind of Tiffany blue are my two favorite colors. And so that really got to me and this graphic, I don't know who the artist was here, but it's just stunning and I love it with the pencil and the kind of the infinite possibilities here. Really, really love that. The other thing is that I've done several other videos with the Passion Planner and you guys know I just, I really love the Passion Planner. I love Angelia. I love her company, the way she's running it. I love what, you know, the charitable work that they do. Just a lot of things good going on with this company. And I really love the actual planner, the way it's laid out. I'm, I'm a, a big picture kind of a person as well as a detailed person. I talked about that with my, the top down planning, which is you have the, your big focus and your goals and you kind of narrow that down to your plan and also the bottom up planning where you've got all the details and where, how that works together. I need both in my life. And so this is definitely in the, the top down classification here. I do have other top down types of planners as you guys know if you've seen my my other videos or just the the planners that I'm using right now. And so why did I buy another passion planner if I have other types of planners and I'm not using this one well? A couple different reasons for that as well. I originally bought the they call this the compact I believe and I wanted to see if the big one would work for me. Because we're talking about top down types of planning, you know, that it's it's your visions and it's, there's a lot of, I think, of uh, details and space that are required for that. So I was wondering if the big, the larger size would work for me. This one is like a six by eight and then this one's an eight and an eight and a half by 11. So you can see the difference. This actually is half the size of that one, just in case you're wondering. So I think, so for, again, for me, it's just, there are a lot of reasons why I wanted to buy this and I'm really, really happy that I did. I do have no regrets. And I, like I said, I would have, I would have kicked myself had I not bought this and let this one go. The gold one is not available anymore. And then this one, I'll show you in just a minute. This one's getting close to being unavailable as well. And I'll show you that right now. It does come with just this little card, passion planner card. And I think these are the signatures of the people that work there, if I'm not mistaken. And this is just the, the promise that they have. So then they come with two different stickers. Last year just was the plan Passion Planner sticker. Let me turn that right side up, which, you know, that's whatever. I don't really need that. But this sticker, oh my goodness, Action Cures Fear. Okay, if you're not familiar with this company or Angelia, who's the CEO, this is one of her mottos that she says quite frequently. And I love, love, love it. The first time I heard it was on with her TED talk that's on YouTube. And it just, I mean, it was just like a bolt of lightning to me. And it's something that I've kind of been working on in my life that if I'm feeling anxious about something, I just need to get to work and I just need to go do it. And it really is true. I stand behind this quote. It really, it really works in the real world. You just get to work and your fears will subside. So I love this sticker. I actually wish that you could buy these separately. I would buy at least a dozen for these because I would just, <laughs> I would have them everywhere in all of my different planners because I love this so much. So let me go through the cover. The, the difference between the two, as far as I can tell from year to year, 
So I'm going to go through each one and do a little comparison here as well. So this one, as you can see, it's kind of got a little um, graininess. It doesn't feel, when you're, when you're touching it, it doesn't feel like it has a texture, but you can see that it, it does have the look of it anyway. This one does not have that. It's completely smooth. And then, of course, the, you know, the graphic, which goes without saying. And then, of course, one of the things that I love about the Passion Planner, just, you know, from the, the, the beauty of it is that I like that the elastics match the planner. So the gold one, of course, was gold, and then you've got this one and the black one. I really like that. I think that that makes it look, the planner itself, look a little bit more streamlined and professional. So I really love that. This is what Angelia calls the Kickstarter green, which is a fluorescent or lime green. I do not like this. This is probably the very biggest complaint I, about the planner that I have, which I know is not a big complaint. That's very nitty gritty and a very personal thing, but I'm just not a fluorescent person and I don't like it. I think it looks okay, like okay with the black, but with the, the limited edition planners, I just think it looks hideous. I mean, it does not match at all. I don't, of course, don't have the gold one, but I'm assuming that fluorescent green and gold don't really go well either. So I would wish that they would have maybe like just the black ribbon and just keep it because I think that would look very, very classy. But she's sticking with the Kickstarter green and, you know, it's her company. So whatever. Just to let you know that I, at least from what I can see, that that's not going to change. As far as my new planner, I'll go through that. The binding is a little bit different on mine, and I'm assuming that it's not supposed to be this way, and I'll show you in just a second. So as you can see, it bows out from the binding. As far as I can tell, the binding is the same. And I, at first I was like, huh, that's kind of strange. But then after I was looking at it a little bit, I was like, you know, that is the perfect place to clip on your pen for your planner. And so I loved it because I, I, whatever kind of planner I have, I always want to make it easy for myself and make sure that I'm not ever losing my pen. Pen loops drive me nuts because, I mean, I use them, but they're not my preferred method of keeping my pen because they're, they're unstable. They're kind of, you know, wiggly. I just had one that ripped off, which is, that was super annoying. Or um, it's, they're elastic and they're, it's hard to get your pen in there or started or, you know, the pen's too fat. Anyway, that's my little spiel on pen loops. So I really like that. But as I was looking at the spine, so I'm running my finger along the spine and up till about here, it has that space in it. And then right up here at the top, which is actually where I would really want that space to be. Let me show you. It's flush. Now that's how I think it's supposed to be because this is last year's on both ends. It's that way. So I think I just have a flaw on this one. I like the flaw. I just wish it was a consistent flaw all the way through, but of course I'm not going to send this back or anything. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but I just thought, you know, maybe for future reference, they could do that because I would, like I said, I would just love to have my pen there. I actually might try because there is a little bit of space there, as you can see, just might like a small pen clip. It has to be thin, but yeah. Anyway, brainstorming out loud there. So I love the cover. And again, it's just flat on the back. It does wipe off. I have a little spot here and I've had a couple other spots and I've just been able to rub it off with my thumb. So I like that about that. I've talked to how much I love this cover. It just feels so good. Obviously it's a faux leather, but I don't know what they've done with it, but it's smooth yet it's kind of like a little grippy. I don't know if that makes sense, but there is a little bit of grip to it, so it's not like completely smooth. I just really love it. I think they've done a really great job. Especially I love the elastic because it keeps your planner, like if you're throwing it in and out of a bag, that's just a great, great feature to have. So let me now go through these. Now, I I kind of have mixed emotions on the sizes here. I, I'm kind of like, I've mentioned a Goldilocks girl where I I like to just be in the middle. I feel like this one is just a little bit too big and this one's a little bit too small. And I think that's the biggest complaints that I've heard, at least with the Passion Planner, is that the, this one's too big and this one's too small because people have larger handwriting so this one doesn't work for them and then this one is just too big to carry around. You know, obviously you have to have a big purse or a big backpack or something. So 
maybe that's a suggestion that I'm telling them is just to have something just in between those two sizes. But as of right now, it's just these two sizes. These limited edition ones are only coming in undated versions, just in case you're curious about that. This one right here does come in both sizes as well as they both do. They both come in these two different sizes. This one, their standard one also comes in dated versions, which you can get the regular start at the first of the year, or they also have academic versions. So this has three different choices, and then they both have a Sunday or a Monday start on them. So just to let you know the different choices there, I always choose a Monday start because I like my weekends together. I chose undated versions on these because I knew I wasn't going to start them immediately. I had some other planners I needed to use. So I, that's the reason I chose my undated. So I don't, I don't feel like these are definitely not ever going to be wasted. I have plans on using this, these both. They just didn't work out for this particular year. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you there. The basic layout of both of these is the same from what I can tell. There's just a few changes, which I actually think were really, really good. So this very first one right here is, I don't know if I can get this in frame, but it says, add your favorite memories to this page. So this blank page with it has the Passion Planner logo on that, whereas this one just is blank, and then it's, they both have the, the label. I've never lost a planner. They like my security blanket. If, I don't, if I'm not hugging a planner, I don't know what to do with myself. I feel lost. So I don't foresee that I'm ever going to lose a planner. It'd be out of my hands, but so I don't ever feel that out. Then here's what I was talking about with the limited editions. This particular, and I don't know what it was with the gold one, but this particular Paradise Blue one has a run of 15,000. Now, I am not sure, I haven't been able to find if that's 15,000 total with, you know, both of the sizes or if that's 15,000 for each of the different sizes, you know, so that would be 30,000 total. I'm not sure, but all I know is you're, I'm getting close. I got close to 13,000 and I just got mine a few days ago. So if you are on the fence about the Paradise Blue and you're thinking about it, I would strongly recommend you hurrying it and buying it because I think my gut was telling me the same thing because I sat on this for a few months that I just needed to hurry up and buy it because I knew I would love it and I knew I know I'm going to use it. So there you go. Okay, so that's the fur very first page. Here is the next page and this is another change here. On this one, the story over here is the same. The welcome our story, how the planner set up, stay connected, last thing. And then this page right here is no longer blank. It's got how do you basically how you make the most of your passion planner. And so it just talked about following your passions, getting focused, putting yourself first, decluttering, challenge yourself, look at the big picture, manage your time, create a keepsake, and stay positive. And then this is probably obviously going to be very effective section right here where a fresh start. Because mine are undated, obviously I can start those at any time, but I'm assuming if you get a dated, I mean, whenever you start a new planner, that's always going to be a fresh start. So this says, what is the biggest goal you would like to accomplish this year? Who or what motivates you most? And write some words of encouragement for yourself to read during hard times. I mean, can that section ever be big enough? I don't think so, but it's, you know, it's a good idea. Okay, the next pages are also going to be the same, which are the, actually, I think I missed one. There we go. Your passion roadmap, these are exactly the same. And you can probably notice like I did, last year they were using this very deep black ink. It can be really, really harsh on your eyes. And so I think that's one of the best changes that they've made this year is they went to this gray, which I definitely prefer. I mean, it's I shouldn't say it's gray because it's still black. It's just not so harsh. And I don't know if you can tell, but like, it's, I guess it's, it looks like they used bold last year and this, the font, they just use standard. I don't know because I, I don't know all those details, but what I'm, the point is, is I really like what they've done. And then of course your passion plan, all of that is the same. And then you turn the page and this is all the same as well, where the passion planning, it, it just describes each page and how to work, use it. And then on this page is, you know, why writing works, prioritizing how it's set up. I, I'm a nerd. I read all those pages, every single planner and every single year, even though it's the same planner. I don't know. It's just, that's just the way I am. Okay. So this one I bought last year. And so this has 
four years at a glance on a page. And so my, this one goes to 2018 because I got this one this year. It goes to 2019. So I'm planning on using those before those years are up. And then you go straight into the month pages. So a few changes on here as well. The month focus is the same where you've got personal right here and then work. And I've talked about this where I wish that they just had blank sections that you could fill in. There are a couple of reasons, I, for me at least, we all have work to do, but it's not necessarily like your traditional job. Also, sometimes you just want to work on a project. Um, for me though, I think the biggest thing is I don't like to have my personal life and my work life together in the same planner. I mean, I, I've tried it and it's just, it's uncomfortable for me. I don't, like I've said before, I, I feel like I'm personable and I share things with my coworkers, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean I want them to know all of my business or all of my appointments or all of my goals or things that I'm working on. So I, I definitely keep those two things separate. So that's another reason why I don't really like that section. But again, I think you need to like with Angelia, like where she's coming from, she's a 20 something, you know, creative entrepreneur. And so that is her whole life. You know, she's young and single. Anyway, I, you got to kind of just take a step back and realize where she's coming from. So I think that that would work for a lot of people, but for somebody like me, that's, it doesn't work. So I would just either wipe that out or just ignore it or something. Then, so here's the big change where they had the monthly check-in last year and then they had the notes to self. And that has changed now to people to see, places to go, and the not to do list. I don't know if any of you have done that, but I've done this before and I really like it. I think it's super effective on this is what I will do and this is what I won't do. It just, it made it a very clear for me in black and white. And it just, for some reason, it just made my priorities that much easier to do. I don't know if that makes sense, but I, I like that section. I think that's really great change. Down here, it said last year, personal passion projects and goals, and then work projects and goals. And then this year it just says, personal projects and work projects. And then the top priority project and the project are the same. And then on the side, a little bit of change here. This one says due dates and tasks, and these just say due dates. So a little tweaking there, and I, I think that's effective. And then as you can see, the months, the size difference between those two. There's just a lot more space here. I use my monthlies a lot. So Again, like I said, I think both of these are going to work for me and I'm definitely going to use both in the future, but I'm excited to try both sizes. And then this one is the same, break it down, create a mind map of this month's game changer. So there's, you have, she had the mind map in the beginning, but this is like by month, which I also like that, talking about the game changers. And then another feature that I completely love about the passion planner is the monthly reflection. I really feel like that is a big hole that I have in my planning system right now is I don't have anything. I'm trying to use some of my monthlies as a monthly reflection, but I like the structure of the passion planner. So this one, it started last year from the one to 10. How do you feel about the past month? This year, it starts with the questions, the most memorable part, the three biggest lessons, assessing your priorities. And are you happy with that? How are you different from this month to last month? what you're gratitude, grateful for, gratitude, and then the three things that you can improve on. And then this is where they changed the, the one to 10, they moved it down here, which I think makes a lot more sense because until you've done your monthly reflection, you don't really know what, how you overall feel about that, if that makes sense. So I think that's a really good change. And then the checklist, last year they had it on the monthly spread and they've changed that to the monthly reflection page. And I also think that that's a really great change because when you're, you're already reflecting and so that just makes more sense. The only thing that they changed, all of the, these are all the same, except as you can see, this one only has three check boxes and this one has four. And so the last one here though, was just to reflect on your monthly reflection questions. So obviously they don't need to put that because you're already in the reflection section page. So that's, that's the only change that they made there. But I, I think that this makes complete sense. And I do like the changes that they've made from last year. And so with the undated, you're going to get your months first, 
you know, your 12 months and your reflection pages. And then it goes into the weeks where if you get a dated version of the Passion Planner, it has the months and then the weeks following and then that repeats. I actually prefer that. It's not a deal breaker for me, especially because this is undated. Because either way, you're going to be flipping your pages back and forth. I mean, right, that's why paper clips were invented. So it's just a matter of if you're flipping back a few pages or if you're flipping back like 20 pages. So like I said, I, I can work with either one. But these are both undated. So let's flip to the weekly pages, which are right here and right here. So as you can see, again, this is one of the big complaints that these, these lines right here are just too small for a lot of people. I said in one of my videos, if you have larger handwriting to just use two lines and do, they have these in 30 minute, 30 minute increments, but just use it hourly increments if that's if your handwriting is too big for that. They still have the same timeline, which is six in the morning down to 1030 at night. So obviously you can see the little, the real estate here is, what is that, about a fourth larger maybe close to a third anyway you get the idea and then it still has the same layout which you've got the Sunday since this is undated you're going to write in the box what the date is obviously the dated will already have that in there and then it's got the today's focus in the box the noon lunchtime is still shaded in there and then on the other side you've still got the where you write in the week of this week's focus good things that happened and then the another huge selling point for me with the passion planner is the quote of the week they still continue that and they also have the prompt I am all over that I I'm so excited I wish all of the planners had that because that's for me that's very motivational and very it just works as far as I can tell they have not repeated they definitely don't repeat from week to week in the planner but I also don't think that they've repeated from year to year like I said, I haven't gone through every single page, but that what, that's what it seems like to me. The personal and work to-do lists are still the same, and the top priority, priority, and errands are also still the same with the four check boxes and lines. And then the big change on the weekly, which probably isn't that big of a deal to a lot of people, but this one is really boring. It just says take notes, draw a journal, and brainstorm. So a nice little section. But this one, I don't know. I it just tickles me. I just love the way that they've changed it. Now it says the space of infinite possibility. I mean, that just brings me joy. Love it. The other change that I've noticed is last year, the copyright was Passion Planner. And this year, it's Angelia Trinidad, her name. So I don't know what's going on, you know, legally with her company. But, you know, kudos to Angelia. It's making progress there. And then towards the back... Actually, is that seen if that was ripped? It's got like a little crease in there. Anyway, that's no big deal because that's the last page. Okay, so at the very back after your months and your weeks, another change here is that last year you had lines that said notes, sketches, brainstorms, and journal. And I loved it. I don't know what the millimeters is on here, but it's like, I'm going to say three millimeters. I love that with my small handwriting, but obviously they just went to the blank pages for this year. I Blank pages and I don't get along. I mean, they make me twitch. And maybe it's because I'm not an artist. I can't write straight. I don't know. But I This is my least favorite of paper as far as like, you know, line, grid, dots, all that kind of thing. I do not like blank paper. So how I used blank pages with my other planners in the past is I usually just either put a, you know, a big quote on here or I get some kind of a graphic from Pinterest that is, you know, the productivity types of things or something like that. And I'll just either washi tape or glue them in here because no way in heck am I going to be writing on those. And then also you get, they continued with the grid. I think this looks like about a five by five grid. And I think I counted the pages or something like 24 of each, something like that. And then at the very back, you've still got that pocket, which I don't have a problem with the pocket. I think the pocket itself feels very sturdy. I mean, it's, it's flimsy, obviously, but it's made out of, as you can see, this shiny, sheer type of fabric. It feels, it has a little bit of texture to it. The problem I think that everybody is talking about is really just this, where it's, this isn't even cardstock right here, but it's glued to the, 
the back cover and as you can see it's going to easily come up. I think it's probably just the inside of this because it's it's doubled right here on the pocket. So if you have a tendency to overstuff pockets like I do, then that's where your problem is really going to be at whereas you're probably just going to have to re-glue that pocket down. But like I mentioned, I love that they match the pocket and the elastic to the planner. I think that's just a really nice touch. I I've also mentioned I would carry this around. A lot of planners I would not take to work. A lot of planners I would not carry around. This is one of the few that I actually would. So I love this passion planner. I'm so happy that I got both sizes. I love this cover as well. I'm really, really happy about this. This is a, this is a good purchase for me and I'm excited to use it hopefully next year, but we'll see. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful as far as the comparisons between the two. It's a great, great planner. I would strongly recommend both sizes for sure and just kind of depending on your situation but hope this has been helpful thanks for watching you guys i will talk to you again soon